Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this series, we're going from Earth to Mars, but instead of landing on Mars at Olympus, we instead uh, got into a high orbit around Mars and we're going to be landing on Phobos instead. So let's just go ahead and switch camera views here and jump straight back into it. Uh, let me unpause. So we're 765 kilometers away from uh, away from Phobos. Let me clear that bar at the top. And you can see we're moving in really fast. We're retrograde to Phobos, so if we look at the external camera and turn around, you can see that big rock back there behind us. That's Phobos. And uh, we're moving towards it, or it's moving towards us, or both, at a very quick rate. And if we don't do a braking burn on time, we're going to slam right into it, and it'll be a big, a big crash. So let's... Uh, Let's bring up, uh, or let's punch our DV into burn time calculator, but let me go a little bit high. So let's go 2280. And so it looks like we need about 157.7 kilometers. So let's just say, let's, let's say 160 kilometers to eliminate the amount of velocity that we have in difference between us and Phobos. That way we'll give ourselves um, plenty of time to break plus a little bit of altitude above so that we can reorient our vessel and plan on settling in. So let's just go ahead and warp time forward and get to that point. So I'm just thinking here for a moment, is there anything else I want to do? Uh, one more quick look. All right, we are retrograde, so I think we're ready. All right, here we go. So we're just going to warp time forward at 10. And when we get down to about 220 or so, we'll come out of time warp because we really need to pay attention at that point. Um, actually, let's come out of time warp now, because that'll give us just a moment to look one more time at Phobos as we get closer to it. All right, back inside. Uh, so again, about 160 kilometers. Let's go forward. Okay, come out of time warp, and now we need to have our, our, our burn button ready to go. So I think I'll, I think I'll even go like 161 and burning all right so we have a two minute burn a little over two minutes let's go ahead and warp time forward at 10 just to get through that more quickly and we'll come out of time warp here um let's go ahead to go a little more a little bit more all right so we got about a minute left on the burn let's just take a quick look outside we're about 35 kilometers out moving at a thousand meters a second but now you can see you know, and, we're, and we've already done a, a rather large braking burn, and we're still moving in quite fast. So let's go back inside. 800 meters a second, 45 seconds left on the burn, about 20 kilometers out. I guess we can warp time forward just for a moment. Okay, about 10 seconds left on the burn, a little bit more. And I might actually cancel the burn early if this, if this number gets to zero and starts counting up, because I don't want it to... Um, you know, I don't want to head away and... Okay, and I, I actually hit cancel right as uh, right as I saw that number, I think, start climbing back up. So we're about 5.8 kilometers up, and it looks like we are, in fact, uh, moving away from it in some direction. So let's go ahead and go to translation. Well, we're already in translation. And let's uh, eliminate whatever remaining velocity we have, lateral, up, down, or whatever. So wrong direction, so that one's going correctly. Let's check this one. That's the wrong direction, so that way. And, all right, so I've got my directions figured out. So this will just get me down to a point where, you know, I'm more or less parked above Phobos. And that way I can concentrate just on, you know, getting the last few kilometers down so we can find, and one thing I do want to do is I want to find a flat spot. Um, because parking or, or landing on Phobos and Deimos, it was always difficult in Orbiter 2010 before, uh, before Dimitri made HAL base, because you don't have, you don't have a flat spot and you don't have anything, and you don't have any way to know, you know, if you're moving lateral or forwards and backwards because the gravity is so low that it's really easy to have 
just a small amount of movement one way or the other that prevents you from getting wheel stop. So maybe we'll talk more about that when we get uh, we get down to that point. So we're more or less parked. Rotation. So let's rotate. Let's go that way. And and then we're going to go essentially wings level. So let me put in a couple ticks of rotation in this direction. And we'll go we'll roll over, or pitch down rather. OK, so now we're more or less wings level with Phobos. So now um, I'm not quite sure what the realistic, well, I guess the realistic way to do this would be to have satellite, some sort of satellite imagery of Phobos, and then we would you know, be able to pick a landing spot. Since we don't have that, we're going to cheat and use the external camera to look for a flat spot. And I don't like doing this because I don't feel like you should ever, 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 ever have to look at the external view to do anything. Uh, the external view should just be there for, for fun only, not because you need it in order to complete a mission. So I'm just kind of eyeballing my satellite imagery of Phobos trying to find, you know, it doesn't have to be a huge spot, but just, you know, 100 meters or so of space that's relatively flat. And I don't know, let's see. Let's let's start just by getting a bit lower. So let's translation. Um, so let's put in some translation to push us down at a few meters a second because we do have a few kilometers to go. So we'll we'll get a little bit of speed. So we have about five meters per second. Now I'm just going to warp time forward so we don't have to take forever to get down there. And let's go down to like four kilometers. About right there. And let's take a look, see what we can see. So it looks like there's a chunk over here, so we want to maybe avoid that spot. Uh, I guess I guess it probably doesn't matter for any reason other than the visual, but I just want to try to hit a spot that's seemingly flat or close to it. Um, I don't know. That spot over there doesn't look too bad. One other thing is like, where is Mars at? I don't see it. Is it? Oh, it's over there. Okay, so it might be actually kind of cool to touch down where we would have a nice view of Mars, but I'm not going to worry so much about that. Mm, what's right below us? I feel like there's a couple of craters right below us. I tell you what, for the sake of time, let's try to land exactly underneath of where we are, and we'll see, we'll see if we can make that work. One thing about Orbiter 2010 that I didn't like, um, I mean, it was understandable, but it, it, visually it just didn't look good, was that if you didn't land at exactly the right place, I mean, you had a couple of options, but more or less, you, you had to land at a particular place on Phobos, or else you would, you would be inside of the mesh, and it just didn't look good. I mean, it didn't cause any problems with, you know, functionality or anything, but it just didn't look good. I don't think we have to worry about that issue here. I think we might have, I think we might be floating above Phobos because I have seen that, not by much, but I have seen that on some of the moons as I've kind of just gone around the Orbiter 2016 solar system where some bases, if they're not set up quite right, or some landing places, if they're not set up just so, you, you it seems like you're floating a bit. So we may have that issue. Um, and actually, speaking of landing, so oh, turn on the APU, put down the landing gear, and gear down and locked. Gear down and locked. Turn the APU back off, and we'll keep ourselves wings level. I think I can probably, honestly, I'm just going to turn on horizontal leveler, so that I don't have to continually adjust it. And what do we have below us? Um, I don't know. We'll see. If, it, if it's looking super terrible by the time we get down there, we will, you know, we, we can always 
hover up a little bit and find a new place to park, new place to land. So a little bit of time warp just to drop that last little bit. And we're moving very slow, just eight meters. Let's go with that. Translation. And I guess this spot will be okay other than the, the texture there looks very blurry. So let's translate out a little bit of this speed just so we have a more delicate descent. And we probably only want to touch down with like a probably like very, very gently because otherwise we'll just bounce off. And actually when we're about when we're about right here, I'm gonna zero out my my downward descent because I just want to see if I have any other velocities at the moment. And it looks like I do, because right now I'm still moving at 2.66 but I'm not moving down, I'm moving either side to side, and it looks like I am moving a bit to the left. So I'm gonna put in some lateral translation to get rid of that, and now I have some front and back movement of some sort. Uh, let's see, so it looks like it's this movement, because I've noticed on these really small bodies, if you have any lateral or forwards backwards movement, you can't really touch down. So let me try to once again get that to about to z is so my up down is about zero and I still have some lateral I can see. Okay, so my lateral is now zero and now my front back is about zero. So all of my movements Okay, so movement in all directions is very, very close to zero. So now I'm just going to uh, put in some intentional downward movement. So hopefully all of my movement now, or at least 99.9% .9 of it, is just down. That way when I actually touch down on Phobos, I don't have any problems getting wheel stop because I'm sliding side to side or because I'm moving forwards and backwards. Uh, I have an old orbiter video where I'm trying to touch down on Phobos and I had that exact problem. I couldn't, I couldn't perceive my left right movement or my forward back movement and I could not understand why I couldn't get wheel stop and eventually I found out it was because even though my up down movement was, was zero, I was, I was sliding side to side just enough that I couldn't get wheel stop. All right, so I'm going to check again here at about 50. So I'm going to eliminate all my down translation, or most of it. So I still have 0.04 movement coming from somewhere. So... Okay, so I had just a touch of forward movement somehow. All right. Yep, okay, so now I'm gonna put the down movement back in. And we're really close now. Let's take a look outside. Go ahead and start taking out some of that down so that we don't bounce. Ten, nine, eight, seven, Let me turn the AP back on so I can six, use hydraulics for the wheel brakes. We didn't get wheel stop. Not yet, anyway. So I'm locking up the brakes. Uh, let me turn off horizontal. Okay, we don't have wheel stop yet, so we're not 
stopped. We're not anchored. Yeah, it's so hard to get wheel stop on these little bodies without a flat platform. Translation. Rotation. Come on, wheel stop. Give me wheel stop. Because until you have wheel stop, you will not stay put. You will bounce all over the place. Let me see what's going on. So you can see all of our wheels are touching texture at least. But there's something preventing us from getting wheel stop. See here, let me think. So I have, I'm sure, pretty sure, I've removed all of my velocity side to side, left to right, front and back. So the only thing I would have would be some kind of up down. Ah, uh, there it was. It was just a, I had somehow just a ghost amount of down that was still trying to like uh, it was just enough that was causing me from getting wheel stop I feel like I feel like at least for small bodies that whole system of wheel stop needs to be something there's something there that needs to be done differently uh, in my opinion but regardless we're fi we finally have wheel stop and you'll notice like that wheel is floating and I think like in the code of orbiter it thinks that that wheel is on the ground but you know just the texture is a bit off there and again that's why you know landing platforms are nice because you don't have issues like that um, but anyway it looks like we got fairly lucky on getting a you know a decent spot um, this little this little place here is fairly flat whereas you know if we had landed up here we'd be like on the side of a hill and I don't know how that would have worked out but we made it, and uh, let's take a look around. Mars is here somewhere. There it is. So if we waited long enough, and it probably wouldn't be very long, you know, like 12 hours, 8 hours, something like that, we would see sunrise, I would imagine, there for Mars. Let's turn off the APU. And, uh, yeah, let me, uh, let me do a quick save here. So Control-S to save, and let's switch camera views. Okay, final thoughts. Um, so I, I loved this mission. I think it's. I thought it was pretty awesome. I I struggled with the XR5 Vanguard, obviously taking off from KSC, but um, I, I learned quite a bit about handling it. And so so yeah, that when I at the outset, you know, I mentioned that my whole one of my intentions for this mission was to kind of learn how I'm going to be able to handle that mission for going out to Jupiter and landing like on Io or something like that. And I, th I think I got some valuable information here. I think the uh, the Jupiter Io mission might actually be a little bit easier in some sense because, you know, Io is, a, is like it's a moon. Well, I mean, it's a proper moon, whereas Phobos is just a giant rock satellite. So I think getting getting some of those things figured out with Io that I that I think that would be a little bit easier. Like we had a bunch of little tiny mid-course corrections that we had to make here with Phobos, but I, but I feel like when we do this for IO, it won't be quite as difficult. Having said all that, I do have this save point here, and I kind of, I, I definitely want to do something more with this. We have locks for like another uh, 1,200 days, 1,800 days. Yeah, 1,800 days worth of locks. I don't know exactly what we can do with that amount of fuel. Let's uh, see, burn time calculator says we still have 7.6 km. I'm almost positive that's more than enough to get back to Earth. 
So one idea would be to take off from here, go back to Earth. Another idea would be to, to take off from here, go land at Olympus, and then maybe go to Earth. But, you know, we've got all kinds of options. But um, yeah, I had fun with this, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, again, I realize, you know, some of the parts between Earth and here aren't, aren't quite so interesting because it's just a lot of fiddling about, make course corrections and stuff. But in the end, the result is that you make it to your destination. So that's all I'm going to say. If you enjoyed this mission, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite part was. And yeah, that's going to be it. I'll see you in the next video. If there is one.